Gibson here from Mountaineer in Scotland, um, part-time mountain safety advisor, just out for another fantastic day in the hills with the dog. Um, and I'm just carrying on that theme of um, getting some more advice about taking the dog out in the mountains, especially when it's so hot like this, you know, when you're maybe struggling to get some water, and, um, but you do want to have that adventure with your dog. So I managed to catch up with Mark, who is a British mountain guide, uh, works at Glenmore Lodge and is a dog handler for the Scottish Search and Rescue Dog Association. So uh, I just thought we'd go and get some advice from him and have we chat about, you know, um, what other things to think about whenever you're going out in the mountains, especially from someone who, you know, is working out in the mountains on a regular basis with dogs throughout the whole year with really kind of variable and changeable mountain conditions. Mark, thanks for uh, chatting with us today. Yep. Uh, I just thought it'd be a good idea to um, ask someone who's a dog handler in one of the rescue teams just a bit more advice yep. on what people need to think about whenever they're taking their dog out into the hills, especially when it's really hot yeah, this time sure. of year. So like, what, what sort of advice would you give to folk when they're thinking about taking their dog out in the mountains? <coughs> Yeah, definitely. Like with the heat that's been over the last wee while, it's kind of obvious enough sort of water for the dog. Yeah, it's yeah. like an obvious thing to say. And we're incredibly lucky in the hills we go into, there's often really good water sources around us. But I think especially the last lot of heat that we've had, often those water sources are dried up or not that good for the dog to drink. So definitely take an extra water yeah, yeah. for yourself, obviously, but need enough water for the dog. Mm -hmm. And like I've certainly done it before, you find yourself giving your last bits of water to the dog yes, when yeah, you're yeah. thinking, I've still got quite a big day ahead of me that I need a bit of water for. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, water for your dog and like a bit of extra food as well. Mm -hmm. It's incredible the energy that they output when they're moving around in the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. And then the latest thing that I saw from the other weekend with our with our Sarda trainer, but it's a coat that goes on the dog and you soak it and the difference in these dog's performance is quite impressive. It's oh, okay, yeah. Cooler with that. Oh, so that's a really like good idea. Sweating and kind of evaporating off. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's quite nice yeah. Too. And like, yeah, I've noticed um, a few other things in, in dogs, like paws and things, mm. like being a little bit sensitive at times yeah. to the terrain, you yeah, know, yeah. so, you know, I guess that's a good idea just to build up yeah. The dog's ability to cope with that terrain. Oh, completely. It's similar to us. Like people that walk around bare feet all the time build up that sort of resistance to yeah, walking yeah. around bare feet. And yeah, if your dog's a, a normal sort of house dog and doesn't spend that much time on rough terrain, then it will take a wee while for their pet, their pads to kind of like harden up yes. and get a bit rougher for sure. Like he really struggles in winter with split pads, but it's often the salt that does that to the dog. Oh yes. So you can get things like Musher Secret, which is like a balm that kind of like soothes the paws. You can also get booties as well. But yeah, you're better off either building up to that mm -hmm. sort of terrain and doing it naturally rather than kind of bringing in these kind of extra elements to it. I guess the problem with the booties is that often the dogs don't walk that normally in them. Yeah. It takes a bit of getting used to. And yeah, their dexterity isn't quite the same as well. Yeah, and I, and I guess with the booties, they don't have the ability to use their claws no. for extra traction and grip yeah. over that various terrain yeah, as well. Yeah. So exactly um, I maybe thought with booties is kind of one of those things that would be like doggy first aid. You know, yeah. if, like, if they do get a split, exactly. it might be useful having one just to protect that. So you, you know. can get off the hill rather than get them further up the hill. Exactly, that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, and and as, as, a, as a dog owner, like, what extra things would you think about taking out in the hill for the dog you know you mentioned extra water extra food yeah you know what are the things you know if you're if you're going through open land where there's maybe sheep livestock yeah, yeah. or especially kind of nesting season yeah for well. sure yeah it's the obvious thing isn't it it's putting your dog on the lead i think the problem with most dog owners especially if your dog's well behaved you don't believe your dog's the one that's going to create the issue my dog would never chase sheep it would never disturb a bird but even like a really well behaved dog roaming reasonably freely, even under control, is still going to disturb potentially livestock or disturb those nesting birds. So yeah. there is a situation with livestock or an area that you know you need to be sensitive in, then it is just the right thing to put them on a lead. We we'll yeah. certainly have a lead with you to kind of add an option. For yeah. That. And what other what other things would you think about if maybe 
it's later on in the year yeah. and it's getting a little bit darker. Yeah, you know, yeah for with, sure. So with Mac, especially when it comes to snow in winter, then yeah. he just disappears in the snow. Yeah. So having that sort of high vis coat. But even the dogs that aren't white, and especially watching them on the training sort of weekends with Sarda, they will disappear like the browner, sort of like hill coloured dogs yes. will just go as soon as they're beyond a certain sort of distance. So definitely like a, a harness with a bit of sort of bright marking on it, mm -hmm. a, a coat like Max wearing just now, and maybe if you know it's going to be late or you're going to be out at night, then putting a light onto it as yeah. well. Yeah. Just that time when you think the dog's never going to disappear, but it does. Yeah. You want everything kind of stacked in your favour to kind of know where it is. Yeah. <coughs>